guys i'm super excited today i am finally bringing my duramax motor fully to the machine shop so i've ordered i did an unboxing of the flywheel which i'll add into this video um i'm gonna be doing an unboxing of the harmonic dampener i have new glow plugs for it um stud kit what else did i get um I just put together the pistons and rods. I do have to get new um, wrist pin bushings for the pistons. Um, when I was taking them apart, some of the bushings look kind of sketchy. So I'd rather just put new stuff in there and play it safe. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna be bringing the crank out of the LB7 over. The LML block is already at the machine shop. I've been having them hone that out. So now I'm just gonna give them basically the whole rotating assembly and um, have them, you know, balance it and do all that. I'm super excited. I can't wait to see this motor done. I have so many projects going on. I really can't wait for at least some of these to start coming together. I'm gonna be starting to paint the truck again, I'm trying to find the body color I wanna use. I was gonna go with carbon flash but I just don't, I think the color is going to be too dark. It's going to look more black than gray and I really want it gray. I bought this LML block off of eBay. Don't recommend buying any stuff for your motor off of eBay. Um, this guy totally screwed me over. I guess it spun a bearing and to try and cover that up because he posted that there's, you know, no damage, you know, to the block, block's perfectly fine, yada, yada, yada. He tried to cover that up by leaving it out in the rain and letting it get rusty so I wouldn't be able to see the damage. When I had, when I sent it to the machine shop, they told me what the damage was. They said it wasn't too bad that I'd still be able to use the block. But yeah, I wouldn't recommend buying stuff off of eBay. I was just desperate to get a block and for a good price, I didn't want to spend $2,500 on a new block that I didn't necessarily need and I could, if I, you know, if I was building this to a thousand horsepower, I would ultimately get a fully built block um, with billet main caps and stuff like that. But I can't afford to do that right now and I'm trying to keep this truck streetable. Everything I get, I just want to go balls to the walls with and I really have to keep it in perspective because if I just go to the balls to the walls with everything, um, A, the builds are gonna take a lot longer to get done and B, it's just, it's just so much money. It's not even worth it. Reliability starts to go down. You know, you're gonna be more likely to blow something up, pushing a lot more horsepower. You know, it's a trade-off. The more horsepower and torque you push, the less reliable your stuff is gonna be. So I'm trying to make this a reliable um, truck. I wanna be dailying this truck along with my WRX, which I have an update for you guys on that as well. But yeah, I ultimately wanna be dailying this truck. This is gonna be the truck that I'm going to be trailering everything to the track with. I need it to kind of be reliable. So I am trying really hard to not just say, screw it, I'm building a 1200 horsepower truck. So, so bear with me. I'm sure someday it will be a 1200 horsepower truck, but for now, we're keeping it like this. So I just got everything packed up. The guy wanted it all on a pallet, so I got my camshaft. My crankshaft is in the passenger seat, all buckled up and ready to go. Let's get started on this adventure of the machine shop. I called out of work today to go drop my stuff off at the machine shop. And so I decided like I'm gonna have some extra time so I should probably go pick up dry ice before the dry ice place closes. And turns out that I have to drive past my work to go to the dry ice store. <laughs> so I'm literally driving past my work right now. It's okay, they probably won't even recognize this truck because I'm not in my daily driver, I'm in the plow truck, so. Hopefully no one sees me. This shit froze my seat. <laughs> oh my God. I'm gonna look like such a crackhead doing this.
Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe below. So today, I am taking the sound detonating material out of my RX-7 to prep it for the roll cage. I wanted to show you guys how to do this because there's not a lot of videos online on how to do this. And I didn't know what the heck I was doing, so I experimented a little bit before I started recording this, but I can tell you the best way to do it now. So I have really bad lighting in here, but you can see I already did the whole driver side footwell and it comes up really easily. This is so much easier than sitting here trying to grind everything off or heat it off with a torch. Um, you can see it's pretty thick, so yeah, I got this whole side done. I'm trying to get the rest of it done. I mean, it goes all the way into the trunk. Um, we'll see how far I can get. In case you're trying to judge how much dry ice to buy, this is um, 40 pounds. So I got 20 pounds the other day and did the driver's side footwell, but I could have spread it back more. I just didn't know what I was doing and kind of like accidentally wasted some of it. So um, hopefully I can get this to spread out thin enough. I don't know if I'll get to the trunk, but I think it'll cover most of like the footwells and the rear seat. So then also I made myself look like a total crackhead. I went up to the counter to buy three bottles of Everclear and the guy at the liquor store asked me if I was making a bomb or what was going on. He was severely concerned. I told him I just had a really bad day. So like I said, I can't find bulk large bottles of alcohol right now. So I just bought some Everclear. I bought three bottles. I think that'll be plenty to cover the area that I need. Let's get started. So I found the best thing to use. This is somewhat good. I use like putty scrapers cause I'm in construction. So all I have is like construction tools or like drywall tools or whatever. Um, but this was the best thing to use. Um, just like a thick scraper so it doesn't flop around as much. The, this putty knife kind of, it's more flexible which helps a little bit if you're trying to like get underneath stuff. But honestly, this works pretty well like in every situation. So I really would recommend getting some sort of a scraper before you do this. Just makes it a lot easier. Um, also grab a hammer. Yeah, cause one, you're gonna wanna kind of crush up the dry ice and two, it just helps to loosen the sound detonating material underneath everything kind of the vibrations just break it loose from the floor. So there's not a lot of light in here. I'm gonna try and put a light shining in here. You can kind of see it off to the side here, I'm getting some funky lighting because of it, but I want you guys to be able to see inside of the car. So hopefully you'll be able to see okay. I just don't have great lighting in my garage. Please, 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 I forgot to say this when I made the video, but make sure you do this in a well-ventilated area. Uh, dry ice gives off CO2. So it can be extremely dangerous if you're not in a well-ventilated area. This is a great way to get the sound detonating out, but can be dangerous if you don't take the proper precautions. So just be aware of that. I don't want anyone getting sick or winding up in the hospital because they're watching this video. My snowmobile and my street bike are just sitting over here untouched and it kills me. I really wish I had gotten out snowmobiling this year, but I don't know if that's gonna happen sucks. So first things first, what you're going to want to do is um, I just dump a bunch of the dry ice all over the spot you're trying to cover. And then I kind of just pour the alcohol. The alcohol is to help spread the dry ice. The dry ice will kind of like super cool the alcohol, but it won't freeze it. That's crucial. So Basically, I just kind of dump the dry ice, pour a bunch of alcohol on it, and then you'll literally hear it start to crack the material. but you can actually already hear it starting to crack the sound detonating material. I don't know if you guys can hear that. 
but it's actually starting to already crack the sound deadening material. You don't need to do this with alcohol. It just makes it a lot easier. Like in spots like this, I can show you right now. Sound deadening material went all the way off of this footwell that kind of goes up and I was able to get it spread up the footwell to get this off. I also have to get it off up here. I think I'm gonna build like a kind of like a, this is gonna sound so stupid, but I'm gonna build like a concrete form that kind of comes out like this so I can fill it up and uh, get all this off. Either that or I'm gonna have to take it off with like a torch or a grinder. Yeah, you can hear it cracking. Usually try and get this thing out. Makes it a lot easier to pour it. I'm not trying to pour a shot. I'm trying to fix my car. There we go. Then I just kind of go. Now we're getting things cooking. Now what I kind of do I take my rusty, dusty, crusty hammer and I break up some of the dry ice. You can see, I got a chip off there. You guys can't even see anything. It's like turning on your fog lights. I mean, not your fog lights, your high beams. This is like turning on your high beams when it's foggy out. All right, so as you can see, see, I I kind of scrape it on a ridge and then I'll start getting these, these big chunks. But see, this is all gonna come up. Makes it so much easier, guys. This is definitely the way to do it. Now we're down to nice shiny metal. You really can't even see what the heck you're doing in here. Look at how nice that looks. Also find the easiest thing to do is kind of take the corner of this thing. For some reason, the corner is the easiest thing to get under there. But here, I was having trouble getting it up um, on the edge. So what I did is I just like poured a bunch of more alcohol right there. I'm gonna put some more dry ice there just to cool it off some more. Try and get it up. All right. It looks pretty much done. Like I said, I kind of just start somewhere. Look at this. This is like an all, almost an all one shot. get it up in bigger chunks so you can just see where you've already gotten and kind of where you need to go. You don't have to do it that way. It just makes it easier. All 
wish I could get this. There we go. You can see, if you don't have the dry ice, it comes off like not clean. And that's what you'd be dealing with if you were doing it with a torch or a grinder. Total pain. This makes it 10 times easier. No, I'm making this look really difficult. It's not easy one-handed. Trying to show you guys. I'm making my life more difficult at the same time. one way to do it. tell when it's cracking like that. But it's not, not cold enough yet. Make sure there's no Alright, so that's all done. Time for more, more dry ice and alcohol. So now what I'm gonna do is actually, I'm gonna put you guys on the tripod. I'm gonna start on this foot wall now. I ran out of dry ice, but I got both driver's side and passenger side, both the foot wells and where the seats go. I got almost all the rear seats, but this like top part, I'm gonna have to get all the surrounding area really cold to get that off. And I got most of the trunk. So I just have this little strip at the back to get done. And then I have a few small sections on the firewall and obviously the transmission tunnel. But like I said, I'm gonna have to build like a plywood holder for the dry ice or something to hold it up against the tunnel and get it cold enough so all of this will crack off. This is already hard enough as it is, I am not I refuse to take a grinder or a torch to this. I will find a way to take this off with dry ice and dry ice only. It makes it so much easier, but you gotta get really cold or it starts like flaking off and it doesn't like fully crack it. Fuck guys, I'm supposed to go do a podcast right now that I totally forgot about. <laughs> 